Okay, so I'm taking a break from uh, blocking out the big castle map uh, to do something a little different, to work on a little test uh, of a piece of scripting, uh, which I normally just do in its own map. So, if I just load up the castle map briefly to explain the problem I have, uh, the current block out, I've been uh, slowly building out all interiors, and there's uh, well, there's lots of them, and um, there's a couple more buildings up here left to be blocked out, and uh, I think a couple of rooms in this tower as well, and that tower. But it's it's kind of it's definitely like eighty percent done. And the last thing I did yesterday was this tower here, so as you can see, highly circular with concentric circles. Um, that's not responding right now because I just hit optimize. And is that past the CSG merge? Yeah, it is. Um, scroll up a long way. Unlock the scroll wheel. Alright. So at the moment we have. 13,163 cells used by this at the moment. Now I'm going to need to do a optimized pass on this. That's not a problem. If if this was all there was going to be in the map, that'd be fine. But there's going to be other stuff, and I need to keep uh, some cell budget. And I'm trying to have to block out. My goal is to have to block out block out around 10,000 cells, um, which gives me headroom to do the other stuff I need, and then headroom to go and put in a bunch of details. Because right now, you know, this rooms are all boxy, there's no, there's no like pillars, there's no like niches, just none of the nice interesting details that you might, that you might want to have. Um, why is it taking such a long time to go into game mode? That's weird. Ah, oh, probably because that, yeah, the, the, no, I scrolled back the monologue and it was stalling. So I built this uh, three-story, free-floating spiral stair, which is, you know, quite nice. Um, and, and it comes in three different colors of dev textures at the moment. Um, there's nothing, you know, ultra fancy about it. It's just a pretty standard spiral stair, but with a uh, hollow in the middle rather than a solid. And just a little bit of alchemy so that the edges all stop nicely, but... Um, the problem is these three stairs between them are using up uh, around 750 cells uh, in the current optimized pass, um, which is, I mean that's just the difference from with and without. Oh, it kind of looks like a Nautilus shell or something. That's kind of cool. Um, but that's a lot more than I want to spend on this particular tower. It's not important enough to have that kind of profligacy of the budget. So I'm going to get rid of these. And what I thought I'd do is uh, try and do... Uh, thinking of how like System Shock 2 uses grav shafts uh, to go up and down. Um, and of course it's Dark Engine 2, so we can do the same stuff here. And... Um, but I want to try something different. I don't want to have up and down grab shafts in a very mechanical fashion, neatly labeled for uh, passenger transport. This doesn't seem, this this pl whole place is like supposed to be full of mages or something. And so something more magical and less less technological seems like a, a good idea. So I'm not going to do it in this time. I'm just going to start a new map for it. Uh, which is called Test Autograph Shaft just now. Which. Why is that not showing up? Oh, because I created in the wrong directory, that's why. Let's go to the right subdirectory here and now create it. We call it the Autograph Shaft because what I want to try to do is have it um, work automatically right so that um, 
you don't have to have two separate shafts and step into one and go up and step to the other to get down. That's just ridiculous. Now, if this won't work for AI, and that's fine. I don't think I want it to work for AI at all. I don't think I want AI to even register that this is here because, to the best of my knowledge, the pathfinding is never going to work for AI. Um, so there's no reason for the graph shaft to even react to them. Like, if it's supposed to be magical, you know, we can hand wave and say it's. It only reacts. Where's the light? Uh, so dim. It's supposed to be coloured by the camera. Whatever. Um, let's just that instead. And I'll track of what I was saying because I tried to do two things at once. Um, yeah, so AI doesn't need to use it. It's going to be player only, and um, just build a little test room here, suitable for it. And let's just load some textures in. Uh, Art Deco sounds like a good plan, right? I mean, you'll certainly be able to see if you're going up and down the, the walls with this stuff. Right, where's uh, this bit here? Doesn't need to be anything special. Right. Let's just do a ceiling. And a uh, floor. Let's just make sure we're supposed to use the same floor for both. All right. Just something that's a little, oh, it's still pretty garish, but a little less, a little easier to see shapes and stuff with than uh, if it's all George. All right. Well, let's create the mission. So, before we go any further, let's just go and fire up Shocked and have a look at how they built their graph shafts. So, I don't have the unstripped missions here. Uh, I'm just using the stock ones from the game. But Welcome so, to the Ramsey Center UNN yeah, Recruitment sure. Facility. Please watch your step, step into the graph shaft. Conveniently, on the uh, very first the last mission, there's graph shafts right here, so I have to go hunting for them. Now, thankfully, New Dark has the reconstruct stripped room brushes, which means I can just grab those rather than hunting down the stripped missions. So, what we have, we have on both of them, we have object, we've got a graph shaft, uh, the particle. Step into the graph shaft to proceed to the street level recruitment. Yeah, hang on. That'll do. Uh, there's the objects that's providing uh, some light and the particle effects. And uh, step in and it just goes up. And it stops when we reach the top. Just a little uh, zero gravity room there up top, and the down one is simple. The down one doesn't need to stop because it just stops when you hit the ground. Now, it is interesting that uh, going up. Well, you just seem to accelerate a bit. You accelerate faster going down. Still, there's still gravity. If, it's, if you had the graph shaft too long, it would eventually kill you from the full distance. And there's dodgy texture there. Doesn't matter. All right. And so the up and down bits, so this is up and down rooms, right? Up room has gravity minus 10%, nothing special. The down room has gravity 20%. Um, and the rest is just, you know, it's just a custom, uh, uh, what do you call it? 
Get to the room archetype. At the top, if we go to the top of the up one though. And look here. We have this room, which we step off into. That's just a default room, nothing special. There's a separate room brush at the top, which has. Uh, that's not the top one, that's the bottom one. That one. Which is called Stop. It's got 0% gravity and it's got this zero grav room script. Now that's that's a System Shock 2 script, so we can't use that script directly. But. So, I mean, before I get onto the custom grav shafts, I just want to rebuild normal working grav shafts, right? So that's why I'm going through this business here. But. Um, if. Uh, If we go over to Telemed's TNH script, uh, where he's built a whole bunch of stuff in Squirrel, thankfully, and put all the source up here. Um, and he's made a zero grab room equivalent script, which I'm just going to copy paste. And uh, let's come back here, go to Squirrel scripts. And a nut file. Let's try and create a file rather than uh, rather than a directory. All right. I right, can close that. Okay. So zero grav room when the plant enters. Well, it's not, it's it only fires for the player because it's on, on player room enter rather than any other object. But um, I don't know whether these ones work for AI. I have a feeling that AI can go up them, but they don't do so intentionally. I don't know if they've actually path. I don't know. I can't remember. It's been a long time since the player system shock too. But uh, so when the player moves in, it sets the player's gravity to zero and the base friction to one which gives them 100% air control so they can just walk out like it's uh, normal. And when they leave, figures out which room they're going to. If that room has gravity, it sets them to that room's gravity, otherwise it sets 100% gravity. So that's pretty simple. And I don't actually need all that because I'm going to, you know, I could do that, but uh, I've got, I'm going to do things slightly differently. We'll start with, we'll start with this and get that going in... Uh, Drum it. So let's start with two. Uh, I'm going to create some room brushes. So trust me to make the sizes awkward. Um, There. Now this, this is going to be a little uh, a bit. This one's going to go all the way up. This is going to be the down one. And put another one in here for the stop room. We don't actually need any other room brushes. You know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to take these, extend them all the way up and down, and just do this in a traditional grab shaft. This is two style the grab shaft. And then these not go away. And we need a room brush on that. All right. I guess we didn't set the floor texture, did we? Because we didn't, didn't go to the ceiling before. All right, what do we need? We need some room archetypes. Create, yeah, wrong. wrong one, I want to add. 
got uh, let's go um, scrap shaft just the number one right let's just create the up down and stop here I can just go on up down and stop all of those names because considering that uh, names got to be unique and if I ever want to just copy this out it would be better not to do it. So the down had, what was it, room, gravity percent, minus 10%, I think it was. No, minus 10% was up, of course. Down had 20% gravity. And up had minus 10%. And the stop had gravity percent zero, right? Now we don't have the script on there. But we don't need the script uh, for this stuff to work. Let's also build rooms. We don't have a player, that probably helps. Um, Great player. Traditional name, something like it. Just matter. Okay, now we will have a proper Garrett player. We make footsteps, but uh, room percent gravity doesn't seem to be working. Now I don't know whether we need a custom script for that to work in Thief as well. I have a feeling that. Maybe we do. <coughs> well, maybe this, maybe uh, Shock has a script happening that we don't have. Let's go back to Shock Ed. The script's core room. They've got a script on the base room, which is probably setting the gravity automatically. Um, so let's do that. Oh, firstly, we didn't even create these to be the archetypes, so, you know. That's upper room. That's the stop room. So I'm forgetting things and drawing conclusions that are completely unsupported, but may still be correct. All right. So that's our down room, upper room, and stop room. And actually, uh, well, we haven't changed any archetypes other than room arch and room archetypes are saved. They're concrete, right? They're not negative, so they get saved in the mission, not the uh, thing. All right. So we've got some problems. So firstly, we don't leave the ground, but when we do, well, we sometimes do, but... Uh, the zero grab room bounces us back, and we kind of get stuck here. Let's me fly out, uh, and let's fly back up here. And uh, the down room probably just works because down is simpler because we end up with contact with the floor. So I don't know what the core room script is doing. Um, if we go back to the browser. Right, and go back to the uh, script here. Right, it's only got that one, right? So, I'm going to have to do something about that, because I'm going I'm to need, if I can't get a, a simple uh, graph shaft to work, then I'm not going to get the right one to work. But let's worry about the stop first, since we've got the script for that already. Now if we jump in here, we should. Nope. 
We don't stop successfully, why not? I don't know. Firstly, the other thing I noticed is this should probably start a bit above the room. Um, so when you walk out, you are above the thing. Okay, that's not working. Now, I'm, I'm kind of... This is not really where I was trying to get to with the stream, but I'm just going to do this as as happens, because this would be the steps I was going through now. Now, I know somebody has... Uh, I remember reading a thread ages ago, and a really old one, about um, doing grab shaft and thief, right? And someone explaining what needed to happen for it to work properly. So, uh, let's have a look. And tutorials, apparently. There's a tutorial on it. Oh, hang on. I'm an idiot. So I created this, I forgot to load squirrel scripts, right? I mean, I don't have gen, but I'm not using any scripts from gen, so. All right, uh, did anything work there? Where's my monologue? Wow, uh, that's the shop monologue. Squirrel error, look at that. Uh, line two. Ah, oh, teenage root script doesn't exist. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I want SQ root script. That's better than errors there. So for my scripts to work, I've got a lead squirrel. Okay, the zero graph room is working there, but we're so kind of starting. We've just entered our center point or whatever has entered, and we're a little too low. So let's put it out there. Let's start outside again. Okay, that works. So maybe we don't need the... The other problem I had is that we walked in and it didn't automatically function, right? Also, we can't move. We get stuck in it, which is maybe good. We don't have any air control in it. It's not, probably not what I want, but... Um, if we just creep in... So that, uh, I guess eventually we're fully in the room. And it works. Alright. So my speculation about core room doing something with breaking physics contacts manually by script. Maybe it's unfounded. It seems to work fine. Well, some of the time. Right, I can s sit there and it doesn't fire even though we're actually inside the room. Um, let me dig up the script documentation. All right, physics. Um, well, we could do a script that forces the gravity to be set from for the player when they enter the room anyway, right? Without requiring to jump. So let's just do that. Let's add a script on there. Good graph after room scripts, right? And We won't worry about setting friction. We'll let's 
amazing. I'll play room exit. They're going into a different room. Well, that's fine. Playroom exit, we'll just set the gravity to the room they're going into, otherwise 100%. We'll just do the same on both. I could extend one of these for the other, but I can't be bothered. It doesn't really matter. The zero grab room one will uh, take precedence over it anyway. Yeah, no, it's not changing. We're still stuck there. Let's print just to make sure. Oh, I've noticed that uh, Telemed's not using semicolons into lines, which I guess isn't necessary. And I was just doing it out of long standing habit from like C or whatever. Now here's an awkward problem. Uh, I can't keep the monologue on sc on stream, so I'm going to just put it off to the side. Unless I go and mess with my config, which is going to be a pain. On play remote. On play remote exit. So we're in the room, but it's not. It's not. We're still standing on the floor, and oof. Wow, you really, really do lose our uh, velocity quickly. <laughs> it's a little awkward. Let's try again. It's not even working at all now. Oh, is it still in fly mode? No, I don't know what's happened there. Alright, graph shaft room is firing on the top one as well. So it's not in here, is it? So, um, Physics or set gravity is not helping us do anything there. Um, we could do something s quite terrible. Ah, uh, this is just a hack. I don't care too much if you have to jump or step hard in the real world, but I just want to check that this works. So what we're going to do is. Uh, <clears throat> uh, got the uh, position facing for the player, and we're going to teleport them to the same place. Which is oh, I need to put that in, I think. literally, you know. Well, I was going to say almost it does nothing. It actually has some bad side effects if we're not careful. But uh... all right, yeah, I got errors. What have we got? Errors, 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 errors. Uh... Line five, native stack of what? Ah, oh, because <laughs> the teleport's causing us to leave the room and re-enter the room, of course. That's a problem. Because what I was thinking of, because teleport will force physics contacts to break so that you will leave the floor. Um, I'm sure there's another way of doing that too. I recently did another test. Actually, I'll just load it up here. Start a new instance of drum so we've got just one shockhead. What was it called? Void water for some reason. 
Um, so this was a test of a room that would like fling you back out, right? Now, a problem I had uh, when getting this to work was, apart from other things you had, I eventually changed the way it worked, so it wasn't a problem, but there was an issue with this earlier version of it. This one actually uses water, so this room is actually full of water and there's a bunch of hacks so that you're not drowning and it's transparent and you don't have the underwater sound and the overlay is just a mess. It does functionally work, but it would prevent me using any other water anywhere if I wanted to use of this without a whole bunch more hacks. Um, the problem was if you went in on the floor, the floor was zero friction, but you uh, if it's not zero friction, you kept, you kept walking. One of these was breaking. I think this one was breaking because the floor is not zero friction. Yeah, because you can hear the footsteps on it, right? And you, you would just keep full movement power by being on the floor. And I did something... Uh, did I do a script for that? Void room. I think that is... I'm not going to show that script here. Um, I'm just going to look up the details of it. It's not really relevant. It's not really... Well, okay, I'm going to show it. Um, Using physics set velocity actually I doesn't I don't remember what. Hmm, I can't remember how I did that. Oh well. Never mind. So teleporting uh, actually what we should do what we should, we can ignoring everything else we can make this teleport work right if uh, let's check the room they're coming from and make sure it's not the room right I don't like this let's From object, object ID, I think. From object ID, where's my docs? Where's the reference for messages? From object ID, yep. Let me close down Shockhead because I keep looking over it. It's mono, which is confusing me. And we're done with it anyway. Um, put that on my secondary screen where you can't see it, but I can. So I can see there's any errors, there's no errors. And um, we just still stack up close to white. Let's go slower then. We should have two room in it as well, right? That's an actual. We should have two object ID here, I think. Self is sometimes the same, but maybe not for the sake of. Uh, 
person. I don't know why I have to go into game mode twice. Um, to force it to reload, but I do. It's just a habit of going to now. But it doesn't reload the first time you go into game mode. Only, I think it only reloads when you exit. So you exit edit mode and when you come back, when you enter game mode it doesn't reload, when you re leave game mode, I don't know, there's something funny about it. Went from room 1 to room 6, they're both number 6, but this, the equals comparison is false and I would need to do something with self, idea self, something, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Just make sure we're not going to the same room. So we don't teleport infinitely. We're still teleporting infin infinitely, why is that? From one to six, from... That's always going from one to six. Oh, okay. That's weird. Uh, This is probably going to break. And I don't know why I'm doing this because I probably don't need this teleport thing anyway. I'm just like, see a problem. Well, the teleport worked, but it didn't have the desired effect. Move them up a whole half foot, well, a whole foot, which will be easier to see. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, I'm I'm a fool. I'm setting zero gravity, not not room gravity. Actually, let's let's take that off entirely for a moment. Right. So it already works, but not the moment we step in. If I put this back in without the extra offset. Hmm. 
we don't immediately shunt up. And we're doing the teleport there, but it's not actually. I don't know why it's uh, not doing it. So we could set the player velocity to force them to go up, but I don't think. Well, maybe it does better. Let's let's do it. Let's set the player velocity instead. Get velocity. Set velocity. Oh, we don't need the recursing. Mark. Forget tell forget uh um forget the teleporting. New vault. It's it's a bloody player. It's a player room enter, it's gotta be the player. So we're going to create a vector and return it in there. And then well, we can spell Z. Let's go up an extra one. It's, you know, who cares if it's right or wrong for the moment? It's a number. It should make a difference. Um, Say physics. Right now, the moment I step in, that little extra shunt is enough to give us some upward velocity. It's enough to make us start floating up right away. That's good. Because uh, I didn't want a little edge case, and then we just sit here, you know, and can't move because we've got. But we've got the friction. Now, if we had base friction 100 in the other rooms as well, in these lower rooms, then we could have full air control, which would be nice, but not necessary for this version of the craft shaft. So let's make this room bigger. So there's room to turn around. Side, which could be one of these. I'm going to want to make it a bigger, a little bit bigger can because we don't want to go all the way around it. Create new room archetype. Did we put anything on graph shaft? I did. Let's create a new one. Add a new one first. We'll do a graph shaft just so it won't inherit anything. So it's entirely new. And of course, I've got to hit this create button and this create button. Not not go from F five. Okay, it's fine. Whatever. As I want a graph shaft room, we probably want another room on top to go into. We shall have basically the same arrangement of room brushes as the one below, so we're always stepping off into a room brush. Now 
visual made with a 0.125 or something extrusion, um, which probably doesn't matter. Let's also take you. Just make sure the top and bottom of you are different as well. That's better. So I want to be able to enter you from anywhere. So it would be free floating, which is maybe a problem for getting through the hole, but as long as the hole is a bit larger than the this thing, enough to account for the player's fatness, it should be okay. So Let's create a script. So the built in the default graph shafts are right there. Yeah, we've set the properties of gravity percent <clears throat> on these room concrete rooms themselves now and from there I guess that's the player right we don't actually need the room's gravity exchange we need the player's gravity exchange and the base friction so we can just set the, the properties on the player when we go into and out of this other room without having to the only reason we need a concrete room at all is so that this, there's the script on there. Uh, I could use a balance trigger instead, but balance triggers are unreliable for entering and exiting sometimes. They're, they're flaky, they're alright for uh, if you just want to trigger, kick something off. But if you want to track something entering and leaving, they're, they're unreliable. Um, and their placement, sometimes depending on how you place them. They don't work properly either. I don't know the details. I think it's when their centers in solid or something, it doesn't work, but I don't know. I've, I've had hassles with bounce triggers before that I'd rather not repeat. All right. Let's create a script. I can type, which you know, sometimes I can. Let's do some copy paste, set myself. Uh, a little bit of typing. All right, so we want to set. Let's just assume for the moment that we're always exiting here to a real room, right? Our base friction isn't going to matter. They're going to hit the floor. Um, well, I don't know, actually. Let's let's see what the base friction is. Now I'm gonna put some oops. Let me put semicolons in the end just because I'm used to that. If it doesn't make a difference, it doesn't make a difference. Um the player's base friction when they enter. We've got an error. Wrong number of parameters, line four. <clears throat> because I just copy pasted and I'm trying to get and give it a value, which is stupid. Base friction zero. All right, so we should reset it back to zero then. Now, I don't remember if these fire if you're crossing room brush boundaries, but it's the same concrete room. Uh, we'll worry about that later. Right, so now we have a room that is basically free flying, right? You just WSD when you're, when you're looking up or down, and 
when you leave the room, did we create room brushes up top here? I did. Oh, those are all auto graph shafts for some reason. Well, that's not right. Let's just turn off the terrain for the moment so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, probably because I. The last, yeah, because it remembers the last one you created, so they're, they're all zero gravity rooms, which I don't want. Set them back to the default room. In what is possibly the worst bit of UI in Drummond, actually. There's a lot of contenders for that title. But it's pretty bad. You think, well, I want to change the type of this room, and you hit create, and pick the type of the room, and hit create again, and it changes. It's just daft as hell, but it works. All right, that's why I wasn't able to step off at the top properly. Don't need to rebuild the rooms, I think, because you actually need to rebuild them if the geometry is changed. So here we have our room we can just pre-fly in, which is a little unexpected. But it's basically as if I went into fly mode, right? In fact, literally that's what fly mode, uh, you know, this, this normal shift queue, Fly mode that I'm using actually does is over force the player's base friction to one and their gravity to zero. Whee. So that's, that's cool, you know, that's that's a nice auto elevator. It's not very safe perhaps if it's a long way up, but it could work. But it's not quite what I want. It's a start. Um but let's try putting a particle effect in. Let's actually commit this first, because I normally like to... Hat. Hat. I still can't type. Okay, that way if I fuck everything up, I can come back to uh, a workable state. Particles, you know what? I shouldn't have closed Shockhead. Let's copy their particles. Let me go back to Shockhead. Shocked. We have up and down particles. What have we got? Well, I'm, it's funny that it's overridden with a different thing. So we have a particle effect um, with a bunch of parameters, which I'm just going to screenshot. And I can paste, I can use MS Paint, but I use Photoshop for everything else. I might as well use it for this as well. It's one. Particle launches info, screenshot that. Well, we don't care about the light. We don't care about the ambient hacks they've got. We don't want to have a uh, this is to shape model name effects particle. That's normal for particle effects. All right. Move those to the screen so I can reference them. To drum head. All right, uh, let's go back to create brush or object, or whatever it doesn't matter. Let's turn terrain back on. Let's turn rooms off now that we've kind of finished looking at rooms for a moment. Create SFX. Well, whatever. We'll just just create it as a SFX. So. We could give it a proper name if we're building this properly, but it doesn't matter. Shape. Uh, 
model name. I think it's called FX product right here too, right? Let's just check. FX particles. And let's give it what? How can I count to the size? I don't remember. Is it? Uh, let's just bring in a five bag of X flame sparks. Oh, it's probably getting the size from the bounty box. Or the particle effects. Okay, let's do it. Ah, particles. Particles, SFX. Ah, we need particles and particle launch info. Continually. No group motion. Let's just use the same number. Let's just put all the same things in as SS2 is doing for the moment. Color. I could look up the. Um, let's actually do zero alpha. Oh, sorry. What does that go up to? Two hundred fifty-six. Two fifty-five. Let's make it not as little transparent. Oh, yeah. well, we will see them. Back in fade time. We're point two. We're point one. We do not want to always simulate them. We want to start with the launch, that's that's important, so they don't all start at the same place. Right, so this is the middle of the grav shaft. And get resized as need be, depending on the height of the grav shaft, I guess. What height have we got here? 36. And we are actually uh, 6 by 6 for the thing, so let's change that bounding box to be minus 2.8. Top of 36. Start just a little way in. Okay, we don't need you. 36, I said. Huh. It's made that 40 high. That's fine. Alright, you can barely see those particles. It's better if I turn the lighting off. It's even worse. Let's just hack it to make them bigger and not alpha. And where is the particles? Um, what color do we want them? Let's make them bright red. 176 plus 9 is 185. Still barely visible, let's also make it bigger. Huge. No? Why are they not changing size? Oh, single color pixels. Single color disk. Might work better. Uh, yeah, that's a bit too big now. <laughs> uh, put them back to what they were before. Okay, they're quite visible. Right. It's a nice field. Shows us that something is happening there. 
even if it's not exactly what we want for the final effect, but it's it's a it's a good start. Um, obviously, customizing them is based on whatever art you want to do. Proper mission, I'd make an architect for this if I was using this in more places. But anyway. Right, so what I want this to do, so this is just zero gravity, right? This is just WSD, free flying, up, down, left, right, whatever we want to do, because we've got full friction and everything. We look down at the floor and do that, but what I want it to do is, right, these ones just, you walk in and they do their thing. Right, and you go up. And this one you walk in and you do your thing. What I want for this one is I want for you to walk in and start going up slowly. More, much more slowly than that. But I want you to retain your base friction. Um, if then I want if you look up for you to start going faster, if you look down for you to start going down, and if you you know, if you're looking, if you're looking roundabout level, you'll be going up very slowly enough to kind of step off. So you're just like, you walk in and it'll start you moving just a little, just so you're aware that it's not just a piece of floor. And then you look down, you'll go back down again. But if you look up, you'll go up. And that might be very unintuitive, but that's what I want to try doing. And it might not work at all. So, when we enter the room, we're not going to set anything. Well, we might. Let's let's. Uh, what do we want to do? We want to kick off the ground, right? You know what? So let's just let's just grab the player when we start and not have to keep giving references to them because like here we get the player as part of the message if we do stuff over you know with a timer over a period of time we will not and we'll have to keep looking them up and uh, I can't see the mono because something's got in the way of it no player is not loaded at, at that point so that's true so the problem is the player gets spawned after things start so let's not bother about that let's just keep that line. All right. Um, what, we want, what do we want to do when they enter the room? Set them to to a gravity base friction, and we want to give them a velocity kick, and we want to start a timer. When they enter the room, we want to. Kill the timer and then we reset them back as we have before. So we need a timer handle. Oh, zero is fine. Um, if we get the parameters, I'll look it up in a second. But here we want to do kill timer, I think. Uh, so 
So back to squirrel docs. So set one shot timer. Oh, you can pass in the data. So we can pass in the player rather than having to look it up. Sure, I need a name for it. Um, we don't actually use it, I'm not going to use the name. Let's fire this off once a second to begin with, which is way too slow. We'll pass in the player there. Let's do the velocity kick in a second, I'll copy that from below, but it's not going to matter for now. Um, ah, sure, let's message that name, right? Look, his name. Wait, what's the data? So the data got passed in, but the message reference just says it has a name and not actual data. If we had multiple timers, you know, this would be important to check the name and do different things, but we've only got the one on this. Uh, all the other scripts on this object could be firing, so we should do that anyways. It's definitely, yeah. Uh... This is probably going to fail, right? What is that data? I'm curious now. This is not really getting me to what I want. Uh, kill timer is correct, and we'll just... Okay. We don't want to just. Oh, we'll leave that for the moment. We're not adjusting it. We haven't done that yet. Is that the time? I want to see. I just want to see what this prints. That should be in there as well, but it's not doing anything much yet. Error. Wrong number of parameters. Hang on. Line 14. Message update of wrong number of parameters. Yeah. Because I'm stupid. Print has the wrong number of parameters. And that's only firing off all the time now. Four. Uh, and which I guess is the player. Their ID, right? Let's do that as well. And the timer fires, yeah, they're four. So that actually works. It's not actually in the doc in the docs, but message.data is a thing. So that's cool. So we don't need to look up the player by name, which works, but uh, easier just to pass the ID. The player ID is not going to change between well, once the game has started. Unless they despawn and respawn, in which case all bits are off, but it doesn't matter. That doesn't happen in Thief. Uh, who knows what happens in Thief multiplayer, I don't care if the script is broken in multiplayer. It's not a thing. Okay, so... <clears throat> what do we want to do when they enter the room? We want... So that was minus 10% was what the... Um, the graph shaft was doing, but we want probably minus 1% because we're going to give him a little velocity kick anyway. So we want them to drift up. Where's the velocity kick? Here we are. Let's just write some notes here. Let's not write some notes. So we give the player a little bit of anti-gravity, give them full air control. We could reduce that, uh, which might feel more floaty a little bit, let's say 0.75. Um, to feel like you're kind of in a magic field rather than just free floating through the air at full speed. Then we get the velocity out of it. 
kick them up slightly. Let me start the timer so that one second later we're going to readjust. We'll come back to that. When they leave, we reset the gravity and base friction. That's all good. Hmm. Base friction 0.75 is not giving me any air control. Well, in fact, zero gravity is not giving me any air control. Also, that's funny. Is it this that's not giving me any air control? Or, oh, that's probably getting uh, reset after the velocity kick. Maybe. Okay, so we got zero gravity. Let's tune this line, let's turn it way down. Okay, now we got slightly laggy movement, that's I mean, you probably can't see it because you've only seen the results, but there's a bit of lag. It's maybe slightly too floaty. No, it's not floaty enough. All right, there's a little bit floaty. All right, now put that back to minus 1%. Right, so something clearly happens when you walk across it. It's like... You do go up. Well, there's a problem. I don't have air control at all. So I guess... Air control only matters with actual zero gravity. That's kind of funny. Now I'm stuck. Uh, okay. Set the base friction back to 1.0 and just double check that. Yeah. No air control. If gravity is 1, as 1% instead of. Do I still have air control? It's not zero percent. Nope. All right, that's interesting to note. Um, I don't get air control unless gravity is actually zero. Uh, okay, so ideally, I'd like to kick the player up with a little bit of force, but maybe it doesn't that matter. Let's just. What happens if I make that huge? Just, just. Let's uh, turn that off for a second. Alright. That's not bad, this gives me a little hop. It's like, I didn't jump, but I feel like I hopped. That velocity kick may be enough just to show that something's happening. And if we set the player's velocity, uh, gravity to zero, just to begin with. Let's give them, let's, let's uh, make that much bigger. Whoa. It's a bit too big. Like what? Ideally, I'd like that to start with a kick and kick you for a little bit with gradual movement, but that's that'll do to start with. So back to free flying, which is not what I want. Um, so let's get the facing.
facing I don't know. Z is obviously not what I want. Z is, is heading, but I don't know with X or Y is the looking up or down. Yeah, it's only firing in front, of course. Wait a second. Say ninety one. X and Y are both coming up to zero. Why is X and Y coming up to zero? Am I missing anything up there? Not camera. Oh, I mean, I can look camera not get facing. I'm definitely getting player facing. Maybe the player doesn't actually rotate. Maybe I just need camera to get facing. Sure. Although that means we don't need to play at all, right? Well, we will need to set that gravity and stuff. Also, let's make sure this uh, timer repeats because they only fire off once unless you repeat them. So it'll repeat. All right. Y is 270. Y is round about between zero, you know, near 360 or zero. And then looking down, Y is 90. Okay. Three hundred sixty minus fifteen, three four five. Yeah. Well, actually, if angle is greater than fifty, no. Let's do it. Let's let's look to up and down and level. Let's do level in the else because it's the, the weird one. Did I hit copy there? I guess not. Like I said looking up was. Two seventy. Greater than 90, less than 270. And if angle is. Wait a second. Greater than 90 and less than 270? No, that means we're looking backwards. If we're greater than 15, less than or equal to 90, then we're looking down. If we're greater than or equal to 270, no. Uh, where's my Photoshop? I'm gonna need to diagram this out because I can't fit this through my head. Why is that so tiny? Thank you. So, we're looking straight is zero. Looking straight up is 270. Let me just double check that actually. 
straight to zero, up a little bit, goes down from 360 and ultimately to 270. Well, not quite, but close enough. And down goes to 90, but not quite, but close enough. Okay. And we want the cutoff at about, well, let's say minus 15 there, 15 here. Minus 15 is 345. Actually, you know what I just realized? I have this, uh, I installed this thing. Where is it? Epic Pen. Why do we need Photoshop for diagramming? Epic Pen, you stick it on your screen somewhere and just start drawing. So, you know, I could do the same diagram again. Let's just pick a different color. Now up would be 270. This would be 0. Be 90. And I'm doing it a little more roughly. Minus 15, it gets 345. God, this is really messy. This is where I should say, you know, if I want to do lots of this diagramming, I should get my tablet. All right, cool Photoshop. Oops, we want to see it, but we don't want it to work. Uh, that's the particle info. We don't need a particle info. Oh, <laughs> oh hey. Um. That would work. <laughs> you know, it shows it in top front of everything, but unfortunately we've got... Uh, a black screen. Let's do this again. Let's draw this one more time. Let's make it slightly bigger. Why is there two kinds of pens? Weird. All right, junk it. So that's zero. You can set up hotkeys as well. Okay, uh, that is 270. That is 90. Um, this is 345. That is 15. That's kind of the boundaries we want. Okay, so I can't see it now. And in fact, it was in front of, uh, not that of the script that I needed to see it anyway. All right. Um, let's call stop angle. Just do that. So now we can do Angle is greater than 270. Let's just looking up first. And angle less than 360 minus stop angle. Then we look out else. angle is greater than stop angle and less than we'll include it include the endpoints there as well less than 90 we're looking down else if angle greater than zero and angle that or yeah that's messy let's come back to that angle is greater than 90.0 this should never happen right less than 270.0 but we we'll just And 
let me just do something else instead of this weird mess around 360. I could, other, I could have done some subtraction as well, but to get it to range, but it doesn't matter else, but looking level. Okay, let's just see if that gives me what I want. We're looking level, looking level, looking up, looking level, looking down, looking up, up, level. So that's a reasonable amount of up, 15 degrees is not bad. Definitely look up at the walls. I mean, we could make it proportional, but for the moment, just three states is fine. All right, so I think I can bin that now and close this up. Uh, it's pity you can't put it in the bottom and have it expand. Oh, I can always move it. All right. Thanks, Epic Pen. No relation to Epic Mega Games, as far as I know. Let's exit it. Because it's doing weird, it's just putting weird entries in my old tab, which is annoying me. Um, ideally, it would not show up in old tab at all. All right, so what do we want to do if we're looking up? Actually, let's let's do a thing. Let's 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 say let's just call a function, right? do it immediately and then repeatedly as the timer fires at whatever frequency we decide to run the timer. So if they're looking up, well in all these cases just we want to, base friction shouldn't change right, we should just be able to set base friction here and, that, and be done with that, I think. Go up, let's go up at minus. Let's make it a little faster than the SS2 graph shaft. Let's make this a little slower than the SS2 graph shaft. This might be bad. Backwards, we're doing nothing, and level, we're setting it to zero. End up looking backwards. It's too bad. All right. Ah, I'm getting arrows. What am I getting arrows? 39. Wrong number of parameters. 39. Oh. Yeah, hey. Go pass in the player. Just stick that over there so I can see it. Looking down, it says, right? Fifteen degrees isn't sufficient. Whoa. You should probably limit your velocity as well, right? In the Z direction, so you're never going up or down too fast. Uh which is messy, but why don't you say looking down? I'm gonna step in. It's fifteen degrees down. 
yeah, 15 degrees down is not very much, but instead of looking down, but then it's giving me negative gravity. Oh, I know what the problem is. Instead of looking down, we've just kicked off the gravity. Yeah. Uh, what happens if I don't set the timer? So a little, a little. Kick <laughs> off the ground. Look, I'm off the ground. Wee, that's weird. Seems all kinds of broken. All right, that kick off the ground only seems to work if we're also setting zero gravity. Not do the time, I just, just Yeah, because if we're not zero gravity then we stop. Um maybe. That's when we were looking down as I went in, so that's bad. If I'm looking up when we go in. <coughs> oh. <laughs> we fly up so hard we hit the ground. If we're not looking level when we go in, bad things happen. Okay. And because I'm not flying off the timer, it's not really adjusting afterwards. Um, Thirty, maybe too much for an instantaneous velocity. Um, so the only reason that worked so well beforehand was because it kicked us off. All right, let's make a note. that right away. So this question, do we need to reset this? Let's answer that question. Let's get the timer going back on. So now we don't have the kickoff, right? Gravity is zero. Looking level. So looking down, we don't have air control. Looking level we do. So we don't need to reset base friction. Hmm. This is all kinds of weird. This feels really, really bizarre. 15 degrees up is, seems like a generous amount of up. 15 degrees down is not a lot of down. We probably want to be like at least 45 degrees down. So let's get rid of that. So stop angle. Let's just tune it here. Uh, let's try that. Looking level counts as level counts as down now. That's not terrible. Right, without the kickoff, we don't actually start going off the ground is the problem. And the player accumulates velocity, which doesn't stop, well, sometimes stops. Doesn't stop, in, it stops instantly if they go to zero gravity, but doesn't stop instantly if they transition from up to down, right? If we look level, then we just stop at the next one unit. It's kind of weird, kind of weird. The weird, the weird zero gravity behavior is just like dead stop. We can walk off. It feels quite wrong to be honest. Like, just because we're zero gravity doesn't mean we should stop all our velocity, right? Hmm. Hmm. 
maybe I should just like bite the bullet and just use an ordinary grab shaft. All right. Um, so what we do? Um, Let's do another function. Get player, get camera angle, get camera pitch. Which is not going to give us degrees. So let's give that, return that in terms of one, zero. Uh, one and minus one and stuff. So if we're looking up, well, let's do yeah, one, sure, whatever. Keep the prints in there right now. Uh, Okay, so get camera pitch. Maybe we can use that in a couple of places. So we're looking up. No, I want this to be negative up because uh, I'm minus one point. I don't have point one. Thank you very much. Um, negative up, positive for down because that's the way the velocity and and position and stuff axes work. So it shouldn't make a difference yet. Anyway, I can use that, I can bring back the initial kickoff and use that get camera facing to decide what angle you're looking at when you step into the thing and and make some decisions as to whether to do the kickoff. Like only do the kickoff if you're looking roughly level, not if you're not if it would actually trigger you to go up or down. So let's bring that further up because it's kind of more important.
be nice if there was a way to set air control other than atmospheric gravity. Right, so there's a the kickoff, but if I'm looking down a little more, it doesn't kick me off because it thinks we're going to fall down. If I'm looking up a little more, it also doesn't kick me off. So we don't have that flying unless I step in and immediately look up. Well, the timer doesn't fire off enough for that at the moment. I'm going to increase the rate of that timer because um, it's a little slow. Let's do it 10 times a second. It's just a little laggy. Well, everything's still laggy because everything works laggily. Let's, what's, what's the gravity we're doing? It's the f going down. Five percent. Is it going up minus eight percent? Wait, what? I'm looking down. Be setting gravity to zero to five, right? If we go up a bit, why wasn't I falling? I expected to be falling. Go level. So setting gravity to five percent is calling that line, but I have air control now, and I'm not actually moving. It's like we're not actually moving. Huh. I wonder if gravity is 5% is just too small a value for a transistor and counts as zero. Uh, let's do 10% then. Oh, yeah, we don't start falling very quickly. What if I let's remember what the previous pitch was? Um, let's change that. Wonderful as well. Four times a second, why not? Um, Okay, so right if if they're not looking the same way as they were before, then let's let, let's actually just kill kill the vertical velocity entirely, so that gravity will take effect immediately. We could actually zero it out. We could negate it if they're going from up to down, but for the moment we'll just do this. See if that gives a bit of a feel for the transition. Yep, error, error, error. Line 31. Oh, I don't know. There's a vector, which I need to get the value into. All right, looking up, looking down still starts a little slow. It's really slow to come down, why is that so slow? Actually, I had some air control there. I do have air control. Just very poor air control. Did 
That's weird. Why am I... Why do I have air control now and I didn't before? Strange. Um... Okay, so if we're now looking up or down, God, I hate this auto indent. It's just I to turn it off, but unfortunately, it's sublime text. It's a per uh, what should we call it? Setting syntax specific, right? What to indent? Wait, smart indent. Auto indent is fine. Auto indent is keep the same indent as I had the previous line, which is you know, different people use different lines. I don't want that smart indent. Let's turn that off for Squirrel Script. I can't turn it off globally. It's just like. Alright, so if I try now. Right, else. Yeah. This is the only auto indent I want. Keep keep the same light indent as I had before. Don't don't be smart. Don't try and be clever. You mess up too much. And it's more mental effort for me to re to notice it's doing it and switch gears to correcting it than it is for me to just type the stuff that needs to get typed. So if we are going up. If we should be, if we're looking up now, then let's give them a little bit of negative velocity. If it's flowing down, let's give them a little bit of downward velocity to begin with, and only set it to zero otherwise. So let's actually immediately kick the player's velocity one way or the other. I don't know whether that figures any good. Let's 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 increase it by ten. Maximum. Uh, yeah, we don't need we don't need extra zeros on the zero. It doesn't become any more zero. Whoa! I got that back to front. Did I? Maybe I have the sign on that thing wrong then. Uh, if positive is up. Okay, then let's let's. Let's positive is up. Let's for velocity. Let's make positive up for that, which means up down. And you know what? We only need to change, we don't need to change the gravity constantly, right? Only if it's the player's pitch changes, right? Unless we want to do it proportionally. And that's a lie now, we're saying it's 10%. Um, wait, did I get this set? Yeah, up. Down. Sign on the gravity percentage is of course different. Okay, we kick them up, kick them down, kick them up. That's too much, that's 10. Uh, let's say three. What I want is, uh, like, the delay is your weight to start going down, which is kind of annoying. And down is a little slower, so let's give you a little more. Have a kick. Oh, hey, that's not terrible. And there is some air control. What am I setting base friction to? One. I don't know why I wasn't getting air control before. Weird. Um, I 
Hmm. We should quantize this anyway. So. I said I kind of wanted it proportional, but it might just work fine with this switch. Otherwise, I could maybe just introduce another band where in between, where it's slower and have, instead of right now, oops. Oh, that's that initial kick giving us a problem again. Uh, also, we've got an issue that previous pitch should always be reset when you leave. So it's um, doesn't falsely. Kick off now. Why is it suddenly breaking? Oh, previous pitch isn't happening the first time. don't want to save that previous pitch, we want less one, and we want to reset it to 999, and hang on, what am I trying to do here? Where's that going? Oh, this wasn't kicking off the first time because we set previous pitch. It's different. And we don't care what previous pitch was, only if it was different. So that's fine. So this is the very first time we fire the timer. The very first time we call adjust play gravity. Which is here. It will fire off. Okay. Kind of, uh, we just do that so it's immediate instead of waiting for that, but uh, same logic applies. Kind of messy in terms of state tracking, but whatever. Um, So, how does this feel now? If I'm walking, looking level. Wait, I'm not getting. I'm not getting that kick off the ground anymore. Walking, looking down. Nothing happens. Walking, looking up, and I kind of float off. I walk in, looking down. It's dangerous. Well, I hit the edges and get... Walking in, looking up is kind of problematic. Um, hmm. Do I do anything about that? Why is that kick off the ground not happening? Oh, because we were doing a set velocity, which is, yeah, killing them, killing their velocity immediately after we'd given them some. 30 is probably too much there, right? Mm, maybe not, that's, it's, that's instantaneous, and they're not 
And the zero gravity stops them pretty quickly. Don't get triggered then, don't get triggered now. I feel like. Uh, and now I don't have air control. Maybe it's just how fast you're moving as to whether you got air control or not. If I, if I can go in and, and only drift upwards. I don't know. Air control is unreliable except for zero gravity. Who knew? Alright then, if... if Stop you drifting through it, right? Let's just throw some numbers in here. Let's just slow down their x and y velocity. I don't know whether that's a good amount. Okay, so if we're looking up... If we're looking level, we shouldn't, we're not doing anything, right? But if we're looking up... Well, it should happen faster than that. Let's... What I want to do is uh, slow them down. If you're going looking up. Or down, so that you kind of end up. Yeah, that's a bit weird for down. But down we have edges of things to contend with. So you kind of end up staying in the shaft rather than drifting off entirely. But down, we should probably be less aggressive about slowing them down. So if you jump, you can still get weird, right? Most people are going to walk in, get looking down, I imagine. If you jump in, looking up, we can slow down. Quite, quite quickly. All right. Maybe that 15 degrees is, is too high a trigger. If I'm looking level, that's, yeah. Let's raise it to 30 degrees up. Floor. That's down. Oh, so that feels like too much. Twenty degrees. The thing is, the like players never look up because looking up, looking up feels if looking up the same amount as down feels like a lot more. It feels e it's kind of balanced in terms of up and down now, roughly. But the up threshold is 20 degrees. The down threshold is 45 degrees. And yet, to me, it feels like I'm looking up and down an equal amount. In terms of measurements, I'm absolutely not. Alright, that's pretty cool. I think that works pretty well. Uh, that's definitely worth a check in. Um, let's get rid of these. No, let's keep this for the moment. I'll do a clean up later.
All right. So the last thing I want to do is adjust these particles, right? I want the particles to reflect the state of things. So they should be kind of floating aimlessly up and down um, when you're going up and down or moving up when you're going up and moving down when you're going down. Now this problem um, I could just have three different particle effects linked to it and just turn them on and off, right? That would be the simplest thing. Um, that would be discontinuous. Because the particles would disappear instantly when I turned one off and... Or do they stop? Or do they wait for it to fade? I don't know. What's the, what's the standard particle thing? I think it... Maybe it just makes it inactive? Rather than makes it invisible? So what I was going to check is... Um... One of those text files, I have the prop list dumped from uh, particle launch info now, particles. So we could, because we've got all these names, right? We could actually go and use property.set to set like uh, some of these, but these probably don't get read. Uh, as they go. It's gravity vector, right? Is there... Not gravity vector. Oh, we could set a gravity vector and set them going a different way, but no, it's... Um, it's particle launch info. Velocity, min and max. So I could try setting this, right? Let's just... Let's just set that. Let's give this a name just temporarily. Just so I can find it. Autograph sharp particles. Let's just do a hack, right? So this is where we change. Property.set. Uh, paste. I usually prefer to type, but uh, I don't think this is going to do anything. Um, that's what it is, right? And max of 004. Probably just set three particle systems and, and turn them on and off. I'll test that in a second. Effect. I expect the particle system reads the stuff only when it turns on and off, or even when it's spawned, maybe. Uh, let's go. Let's make them go wild from minus thirty to plus thirty when we're, when we're looking up. I know. Look at that. It does change. Okay. Um, let's just Rather than a name, we should probably use a link from the room to the particle. Although, yeah, that does mean a new concrete room for each instance of this, but I'm 
probably only gonna have one, maybe two of these in the level, so that's not a big deal. Stick with this for the moment. What are we doing? Pitch. Greater than zero first for looking for going up. Oh look at that, it's doing a st stupid smart event again. It's going up. Bill min dot z equals three. We'll just use the same numbers we got before. So I could do this as, I was going to say I could do this with meta property, but I can't because particles, uh, if you have particles on a archetype, they get put on the actual, they're, they're an inher uh, not an inherited, I don't know why the icons seem back to front, right? This is, the dots are set on this object and get inherited, the tree ones get recreated on every child so you can't have change particles on a meta property or anything but I could turn different ones on and off or I can just hard code this minus three minus four and actually I want the drift to be stronger actually so they should go from six to ten minus six to minus ten and uh, let's say max um, because these numbers work the other way. I'm going to max and let's kind of drift up and down at random but slowly. Right, there's the up and down but slowly. Maybe not slow enough. Now they're all going up with me. And now they all start coming down. And then they start drifting. It only seems to read them when they respawn them. But it does read them. I want them to be going significantly faster than me. So let's say 10 to 15, minus 15 to 10, and put, make this really slow. And we should do that right at the start as well. You just play gravity. We should. Oh, hang on, that's not even at the start, that's, uh... I kind of was thinking about this to start the particles reacting even when we're not in the other grab shaft room. Which is fine, I could actually do that. I don't need it to happen dramatically but let's just do it on let's just, let's just do it on sim doesn't need the player so we can we should be able to do that I mean we should be able to set it you know properly what's what am I doing wrong I kind of go into game mode. That's weird. Oh, wrong one.
Well, that's not doing anything anymore. Why not? Did I change the name? It... Oh, the name of that wasn't saved. All right, what is it? I don't know when I last saved. I thought they saved more often than that, usually, but I guess not. So what did I change here? Nothing. Let's put the alpha back down. Start shooting up. They shot to start shooting down. That's perhaps a little fast. That's not bad. It kind of suggests the speed, suggestive of the speed you were going at, at a minimum, and others going faster. And then they kind of drift in and out like dust moats. That's that. That alpha is terrible. I mean, for this effect, I mean. Testing this in a brightly lit room, which is not really ideal either, but... Alright, let's use a... let's use a link... Um... Link, link, link. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this. What's the link? Link. Get all. All the script frames from ourselves. Four, four, four. How did I do this before? Still, I haven't written much Squirrel script for a while. Let's go to new bridge SQ scripts. Uh, generic. For each link in links, link data. Okay. I have a helper function there, but yeah, whatever. For each, every language does their iteration syntax slightly differently. You use enough of them, you have to look up every time. Just stupid, but whatever. Link data. I don't know if that's supposed to be local or not, or if it's automatically local. It'd be stupid if it's global, but whatever. If link data equals. Particles. Link dest. I think it's the function. God, this, this API for links is ridiculously bad. Yes, link dest. All right. So we're going to look at a link. Particles. Any local particles. Just don't need to do anything, just return immediately if there isn't a particles object. Alright, so now this doesn't need a name particularly, It'll just be an SFX. It's ID 3, so let's link it to this room. Where are we? Grab shaft. 
put params to the SFX and make sure it's called particles with a capital P. There's a thing that instead of just particles, we should be calling it like autograph shell particles. It's not working, is it? not seeing the error there. In that. Usually when I have an error it's because it just prints a huge view, not just a single line. <laughs> Alright. And when we exit, we should also return particles to zip to to zero, right? down even though we're still looking down Let me set okay the only problem now is edges edges goes and we set set too fast the down's not too fast but that seems awfully quick to go up Yeah, there's awfully quick to go up. Let's tweak that a bit. Where's our gravity? Minus twenty percent. Problem is being gravity is continuous acceleration, so the further you go the more up it gets, but it's fine. Um, let's get rid of those looking up, looking down statements now, because I don't think I need them anymore. All right. That stuff is stuff we don't need. And the only problem is hitting edges, but if the room was significantly smaller than the box, let's make the where's the the brush? I mean, we've got a bad room now because in the middle. It's not covered by a room brush, but I don't care about that just for the moment. Because that's actually a good amount of gap. Garrett is two and a half feet wide. One unit means you can't fall down the edge. You will be in that room. Even though sound won't transmit between these rooms now because the gap, uh, the bad room here and the here doesn't actually matter because we don't actually leave this point. It would only matter if we were like shooting arrows into these sides and we wouldn't hear a sound or whatever. But it certainly doesn't matter for this test. Um, Pink. Oh, 
Please don't actually change rooms. All right, I think that's uh, pretty darn good. It's pretty much exactly what I wanted. Obviously, I'll tweak the particles to better suit what I want. I might tweak speeds and stuff when I put this in context, but uh, as a replacement for that spiral staircase that doesn't chew cells, this is pretty cool. Pretty cool. And I really like discovering that particles actually you can change the properties by script and they'll update. That's probably less efficient than it should be. But uh, and this is four. This is firing with timer four times a second. It's still still seems reasonably relative, which is good. Brilliant. I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it without massive, massive shenanigans. Like, ideally, if you're looking up or down, it would shift you towards the center of the thing, right? And you'd, ideally, the, you'd have air control proportional to the speed you're going up, and the speed up, going up and down would be not continuous, but proportional to, you know, not keep accelerating, but proportional to how far you're looking up and down to a maximum. But yeah, all that stuff is a lot more effort to do than just fiddling with gravity, so I'll fiddle with gravity and leave it at that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is an automatic grab shaft. And I hope you enjoyed watching or learned something or whatever. And uh, I will stop my stream and stop the recording now and go make myself another cup of coffee.